Okay, may gusto pa bang iba na mag-express ng kanilang thoughts or ideas? Yes, we have Mr. Apusaga. Okay, you may you may uh, speak now, Mr. Apusaga. Okay, so in other words, what you are trying to say is that Filipinos adjusted. It is because um, hindi pa nila alam kung sino ang pwede papalit sa government. Tama ba? Or um, you're trying to say is Filipinos are now yearning for um, governance, self-governance, and they have this maybe confusions kung sino yung uupo. No, sa position. No, is that what you're trying to say here, Mr. Apusaga? Of course, alam naman natin talaga, ladies and gentlemen, that uh, the Filipinos were, during the time no, of Spanish colonization, at the end or edge of the, of the colonization, Filipinos are longing or were longing for self-governance. Sige. Then we have Mr. Huaban. Um, for me, sir, um, I think that um, they experience um, freedom or independence for a short time, sir. But um, the Spain and the American, sir, kay, they have um, kanang kasunduan, good sir, called um, Treaty of Paris, sir. Like, kanang gibaligya nila. Ay, like, gipagkasunduan nila, sir, ba? Like, kanang gibayaran man yata sa American ang Spain para, sa, para sila na po ang next mo invade sa country. Okay. Tapos, Thank okay. you, Mr. Huwag. Okay, sige, sige. Napahan na to go. Ay, okay lang ako, sir. <laughs> oh, okay. Sige, sige. Now, what really happened to the Philippines and to the Filipino? Of course, tama yung sinabi kanina lang, Mr. Quinones. No? Filipinos adjusted later on for uh, the next set of colonizers. And they, they, nila, they were a bit surprised actually na sa sinabi ni Mr. Huaban, binenta tayo sa mga Amerikano. And Mr. Apusaga's point of view as well is that bakit kailangan na ibenta tayo at bakit naman na nagka-interest itong Amerika wherein ang Pilipinas naman ay may sariling pang gobyerno na nang napaalis na ang Kastila. Bakit tayo binenta? Okay? What was the point of selling us to other uh, foreign powers wherein Filipinos already established their own government and at the same time, we already declared our independence. No? Take note, nas, like June 12, 1898 na ta. So, what's point? Ganong ibaligya pamanta sa mga Kastila. So, my topic for this morning, thank you, Mr. Apusag. Mr. Huaban and Ms. Quinones for your sharing. Now, my topic for today will concern on the entry of the new colonizers in the Philippines is the American occupation in the Philippines. Okay? The American occupation in the Philippines. Alam nyo, class, during that time, the, the end or the edge of 19th century, it was the time that Spain was already losing her territories. Okay? And itong sinabi ni Mr. Huaban kanina, itong Treaty of Paris, okay? Treaty of Paris, is actually the signal or the start of um, uh, Yung, yung tawag natin, uh, relinquishing, you know? relinquishing the territories of Spain over the Americans. And alam naman natin kasi na nagkaroon na ng uh, Spanish-American War bago ang Treaty of Paris. Okay? So it was on that very day, okay, please take note na lang class ha, kasi wala, ako, wala sa information, ang uban, no? dali-dali na kung ano nga PowerPoint. So it was on that very day, December 10, 
1898 that the treaty was signed between Spanish and American peace commissioners to end the Spanish-American War. It is relinquishing, concerning on relinquishing the last territories na hawak ng Spain. So, unsa to siya ng mga territories kani adto, no? Naadiha ang Guam, naadiha ang Puerto Rico, naadiha ang Cuba, and of course, ang Philippines. And uh, ang concern lang natin nito ang Pilipinas, no? hindi na natin concern si Cuba, si Guam, at saka si Puerto Rico. So, kasali sila sa agreement between Spanish and American peace commissioners sa kuponan ni Queen Isabella, sa kuponan ni, ni President Theodore Roosevelt. And for the Philippines, part of the agreement ng uh, Treaty of Paris is that Spain will give the Philippines to the United States. Then you'll give handling us to the U.S. and they will give or U.S. will give the sum of twenty thousand U.S. dollars as payment for the improvements Spain had made in the country. Okay, tama yun siya. U.S. paid twenty thousand U.S. dollars for Spain, and part of the agreement again is that U.S. permit Spain to ship. And sell commodities to the Philippines for a period of ten years. For a period of ten years. So as you can see in the picture, ito yung ito yung um official uh photography and no picture ng kauna una ang treaty. Na, na nangyari between America and Spain. Na, yung relinquishing of uh, Spain's terri remaining territories to the U.S. Yung uh, Puerto Rico, Guam, uh, Cuba, and um, Philippines. Kasi itong mga countries na ito, class, they're, all, they're already um, yearning for self-government and independence. Kaya lumaban na, no? lumaban na tayo sa Espanya during that time. Kaya, if you're going to search for the flags of Puerto Rico and then Cuba, then Pilipinas, na ayun na siya ang gulo nga magkapariho-pariho, nga ay square, nga ay rectangle, ah, na triangle, something like that. Kaya, tahi, tao sa ilang sentimento, no? During that time, no? Yung longing natin for independence. And of course, as what you have mentioned a while ago, Malaking kinagalit ito ng mga Pilipino, particularly sa kuponan ni Emilio Aguinaldo. Spain has no right to transfer the Philippines to the US because bago pa nag December 10, 1898, napaalis na natin ang Spain through the war, no? We already won several um, territories from Spain. Like for example, yung mga provinces sa Central Katagalugan nakuha na na sa mga Filipinos kaning alto. The only one remained is the Intramuros, okay, during that time. And Spain has no right over the Philippines kasi nga daw, Philippines were already independent and had a government of its own. Nag-December nag 10, 1898, that ha, nanatay ato ang kaugaling nun nga pang gobyerno. This new revolutionary government, no, na na-draft, that paved way to the Malolos Constitution. So, nga nung gibaligya pa ta. So, malaking shock yan sa mga Pilipino. And since there's a new threat now facing upon them, the Philippines, um, the Philippines fought against the Americans. So, nagkaroon ng Filipino-American War. It lasted for several months or Yes, and until the end, no, since uh, nakapture na ito si ano kasi si Emilio Aguinaldo na dakpan na. Alam nyo, no, uh, last I think yesterday, parang yesterday class no, nag-browse ko ba no while uh, while well, during my spare time, natanaw-tanaw ako sa Facebook. And then I saw this um parang entry sa Facebook na um iyang gipanindot ang color sa sa mga Philippine presidents, okay? So, kailangan ta sa mga Philippine presidents. And upon looking to the, yung parang, yung comment-comment ba yan siya, class nun, na may mga like, na may mga heart, na ay ka na mag-embrace o heart, which is care, ana-ana. So, nagtanaw ko, class, 
ang Emilio Aguinaldo as the first president of the republic, ang iyang habitaw dito kay na I laugh, kung na I angry. Puro laugh, angry, tapos ka ng blue na nga okay. Eh kung nga po ni Emilio Aguinaldo, eh, no? na gilaf o okay, okay lang sa uban mga Pilipino karon. Pero kay tungod mang gunakla sa ato modernisasyon karon, um kabalo mang yun no kung sa gibuhat ni Emilio Aguinaldo. Uh, very evident yan sa class, no? to tell you honestly, kung kinsa yun nagpapatay kay Andres Bonifacio, it was him who ordered that. Although it was not clear in the 1901, 1899 rather, 1899 1900s kung siya ba yun ang nagpapatay kang Antonio Luna, pero siya man ang nagsugo anak ka Antonio Luna, na before before siya namatay, no? na sila pagpupulong actually, nga, ingon nga, um, dito ta sa kabanatuan no sa isa ka kanang ano tawag anak kas kumbento mag meeting pero pag abot dito yeah that was true no wala di ay dito sila Emilio Aguinaldo no uh, dili siya clear dili siya clear sa sa history kasi what was ni siya bagyo ang nagpapatay but um very clear for some historians siya ang nagsugo nga muad to dito no sa during the years of um, parang March ata yun class no 1899 yung muragamatay sa army I'm not particular on that anymore and then I, I browse further I browse further ang uban na mga heart no? lalo na kay kay Marcos kay Duterte na mga heart kay Diyos Dado Makapagal kay Gloria Makapagal Arroyo na I love hala puro love yan na po yung nag-care kay, kay, kay Ninoy Aquino angry tapos love Kay Cory Aquino, angry ang daghan tapos okay of love. Kaya po kala ka, no? Maraming kung anin na yun ang kuan sa mga Pilipino kung di unsa ta sa mga world leaders. Interest kasi yan nila class, no? Kung bakit ganun yung country natin. Labi na katong uh, di kadawat pa nga. Mahuman na ilang mga termino. Anyway, sorry for the advertisement. <laughs> now, the Americans, uh, after the war, no? After the war, no? nag-surrender ang mga Pilipino. The Americans used the wealthy Filipinos to persuade the people to cooperate with the Americans. So that means to say, what compelled this um, American troops to stay here in the Philippines, what it, uh, to stay here in the Philippines, pala, it's also because of some of these Filipino, wealthy Filipinos were collaborating with them. So, what was the basis of American rule? Of course, during the first phase class, since many were um, not favor of uh, of uh, the American rule, kaya nagkaroon ng aggression, kaya nag-implement sila ng martial law during the first phase. Kaya kung titignan natin sa history din class, marami din ang galit sa mga Amerikano. Kaya naghan po sila o gipampatay, or gipamatay rather. No? Um, very familiar yung... Um, uh, yung pagpapapatay sa kan sa mga ano ba yun yung nag nag uh, resist somewhere in Mindanao no daghan pud sila lagi pamatay kani antong unang panahon so daghan pud og wala ginahi sa mga Amerikano alam naman natin na ang nalingaw lang na na ang mga Amerikano kay ang mga Filipino nga naay kaya no? take note on that Filipino nga naay kaya now banishment of the patriots ito yung sinasabi ko kanina class na there was there was uh, uh, the filipinos were collaborating with the americans no ito yung sense na there was a diminishing um act or character of pagiging makabayan ng mga pilipino many wealthy and educated filipinos were collaborating with the us and this is to serve their interests actually during that time and may mga proposals pa ito mga mayayamang Filipino noong unang panahon na Philippines is not ready for self-government. Kaya kailangan namin ang America for guidance and all. So, lain kaayo to siya for, for some Filipinos, lalo na sa, sa if, you can, if you can review no, the film of uh, General Luna, no, si, amot nakalimot ko sa pangalan sa artista, Diba? Parang galit siya during the cabinet meeting. Kaya tungod, nagsugot ikining sila Pedro Paterno o sila Tomas Mascardo na 
wa man tay mahimo kundi dawato na lang ni mga Amerikano kasi nga may mga interest sila during that time no labi na na si Pedro Paterno no kung nag magstudy lang jud mo sa history but anyway it's not our focus now but there was a diminishing sense of pagiging makabayan ng ibang Filipinos during that time no so do you think we are very united during the American period no Filipinos were not united so what are the following American influences no, that probably changed or um, highlighted Filipinos' change of culture and character? Now let's have first the Philippine Bill of 1902. Now take note class, kung longing ni na um, Marcelo H. Del Pilar and uh, Dr. Jose Rizal, itong karapatang pangtao sa mga mamamayang Pilipino na maging sana kapantay din natin yung mga Kastila noong unang panahon though hindi yan siya nabigay no? it was never granted to the Filipinos even when Dr. Jose Rizal established the La Liga Filipina but um, during the time of the Americans they provided this bill and guaranteed the Filipinos the right of free speech no? the right of free press no? free speech, free press and freedom to petition kasi wala tayo nin during the time of the Spanish colonization. And this Philippine Bill of 1902 as well um, acts or opens the census of 1903, the first ever scientific census in the Philippines. My census nga during the time of the Spanish colonization, pero alam naman natin nga that, that was just to, to um, anong tawag dito plus, to monitor the taxes of the Filipinos, no? Kaya concern kayo sila sa taxes, labi na mga fraile kani atong unang panahon. Now, another is what we call the sedition law. Now, sedition law was enacted or passed in 1901 that punished a Filipino individual if ever caught advocating for independence or separation from U.S. Okay? So, uh, lahat ng mga susuk uh, magsusukwahi against uh, Spain, uh, against US rather is um, they will be punished during that time. Well, very familiar tayo nito class. Alam nyo naman na um, American occupation or the Americans widens the Filipinos' horizon to political consciousness. Now, ito yung isa sa mga influensya nila sa atin talaga. And Part of this is how Americans encourage the Filipinos to participate in civic and public affairs. So, my creation of mga political parties no, during the time of the American period, wherein Filipinos became part of an assembly. And one of the examples here was the federal party that was created by Trinidad Pardo de Tavera, wherein um, part sa kanyang platform actually na sana gawin ng Pilipinas as a state of U.S. Okay? And um, iba't-ibang mga parties pa ang na-create during that time, no? Yung Nationalista Party, Liberal Party. Actually, addition na lang itong First Democratic Party class. Kasi to be honest with you, ang official talaga na party nung panahon ng mga Amerikano, particularly when the 1935 Constitution was passed, became the Commonwealth Government, is the Nationalista and the Liberal Party. Ah, no. Um, it's not nationalista, rather. It's the first democratic party and the liberal party. No? Kung mag-study mo sa Philippine politics history, ganila yun silang doon ang acknowledge during the time of the American period. Pero I tell you, bakit nagkaroon ng iba't ibang party ngayon? Kasi suwapang itong udang Pilipino noong unang panahon. No? Gusto yun sila nga na apoy position. Anyway, Sorry for that. Kasi parang nagbigay na naman ako na swapang ang mga Pilipino noong unang panahon. Now, considered as their greatest achievement of the Americans in the Philippines, ito yung public school system talaga, class. No? Naging free and open ang education sa lahat. Kasi nga, um, ito yung uh, advocacy yan ng mga Amerikano para sa atin. No? And American teachers were both to the Philippines. Kaya tinatawag silang SS Tom, uh, Thomas Sites during that time kasi nga sakay sila ng barko SS Thomas and English was used as the medium of instruction now another another um influence nila sa atin plus ito yung pagbibigay karapatan 
sa mga kababaihan. No? First ever, that uh, more Filipino women can now enroll to colleges and universities. And they can choose whatever course what they want, no? like pharmacies, dentists, and so on. Seeing in this picture, uh, nakikita ngayon sa picture, isang Filipina women, woman na naging natuturo na no? ng, ng English lesson sa mga batang Filipina, no? Filipinos noong unang panahon. And a lot of Filipina India women Men are being at public schools no sa nakikita niyo dito so maraming opportunities na ang mga nagantay sa mga sa mga uh, babae no noon pa they're not they're no longer reserved sa bahay but um they can now attend to formal schooling actually now uh, let's proceed um ito yung sa class no kung titingnan natin um again it widens the Filipinos' political consciousness. And take note that when the Americans arrive, part ng naging sana sentimiento ng mga Pilipino is that pagkaroon or panghawakan natin ang ating sariling bansa at tsaka pang gobyerno. To have our independence and to, have, to, to, to run our own government. So, naging promise din yan ng mga Amerikano sa mga Pilipinos, yes, we will do that. We will do and grant your independence, government, but provided that Filipinos must be trained for drafting constitution, arranging their own constitution, and so on. Kasi parang requirement at parang requirement nila no, na, na dapat ganito yung mangyari sa isang bansa during that time. Kailangan may national language, and so on and so forth. So, um, the Commonwealth government happened wherein there's a need for a transition for 10 years. No? Ito yung kung saan class, sandali class ha, parang, parang pinapapasok ako sa tinatawag nating mga sprakatak. Masasundong tanagtaan yung mga bata noong isprakatak, isprakatak, mga bata. Ay na, just with faith ministry. Okay. Now, there's been a, a transition of government for 10 years, and that was to what? To prepare the Philippines for independence. Pero I tell you, ladies and gentlemen of BSN1B, hindi ito agad agad class na. Um, Hindi ito agad-agad na naibigay sa atin. Ano? I, I tell you, I tell you, hindi ito agad-agad na ibigay sa atin. Dumaan pa ito sa series of processing from different laws, from different um, suggestions, from different acts, from different drafting. No? Nagka, nagkaroon tayo ng Jones Law of 1916. No? Pagbibigay uh, karapatan sa mga Filipinos to run their own government. But after that, kailangan pa ng mga Filipinos to create a Philippine Assembly in order for them to draft the Constitution. So nagkaroon ng Philippine Independence Missions and after the whole drafting from the Philippine Assembly composed of Filipino legislat uh, legislatives, nagkaroon ng Osrox Mission or tinatawag nating Independence Missions. So ano ito siya class? Si Sergio Osmeña kaya Osrox, si Sergio Osmeña and si Manuel Rojas ay pumunta ng Amerika from 1919 to 1933 to propose the drafted constitution na ipiniprepare for self-government. And then um nung bumalik sila no, nung bumalik sila, nagkaroon ng Tidings McDuffie Act, okay? Just disregard this one. Tidings McDuffie Act that was promulgated on July 30 of 1934. That means to say, itong act na ito, when it was approved by the President of the United States, naging tidings McDuffie law. Now, kailan siya naging law? May 1, 
of 1935 na, no, 1935. And then after series na naging law itong Tidings McDuffie, naging naaprobahan ang ating 1935 Constitution. So when the 1935 Constitution was um, approved, nagkaroon ng election. And nang nag-election class, tumakbo itong dalawang napaka-known in their organization, no? itong katipunan during that time. And it was uh, Manuel Luis Quezon for an, for another for a, another part for a party and then it was um, Emilio Aguinaldo for another party after the after the election Manuel Luis Quezon won during the 1935 elections so natalo niya si uh, Emilio Aguinaldo and the commonwealth government under the 1935 constitution was inaugurated on November 25 1935 making Manuel Luis Quezon as the president of the commonwealth government where even though na Pilipino na nga no may sarili na tayong panggobyerno through a commonwealth government pero when we say commonwealth government class we are still um being held by another foreign power. And take note, we are a territory of the Americans. No? So, um, actually, because even until now, may mga common, yung, take, di ba, Cuba, Puerto Rico, Guam, and Philippines. Ang Cuba, okay, na, na, no, independent na, na sila. Philippines, kita independent na. Pero ang Guam and Puerto Rico, even until now, they're still a commonwealth government. No? Siguro may mga arrangements sila with the Americans. So, kaya, like, until now, pinakahawakan pa rin sila ng, ng mga Amerikano. So what are the policies of the Commonwealth government? No, titingnan natin 'yan, national defense measures, government reorganization, social justice program, economic measures, educational progress, women's suffrage, and the national language. No, ito yung pagpapalakas ng ating mga depensa at saka pagpapalakas ng ating um, uh, policies for us to be acknowledged as um, a nation talaga or a country. So, so all and all, ito yung um, all and all, ito yung influensya sa atin ng mga Amerikano. No? Pagpapalakas ng ating democratic partnership or yung diplomatic relations natin with the Americans. Second one, of course, yung education and school system then we have the public health and welfare. Then we have the transportation and communication. And of course, we have the, ito na ang sabi ko, class, why didn't our political consciousness, no? more Filipinos can now be admitted on the politics, participate on, um, uh, anong tawag dito, class, uh, uh, politics and governance. And then we have language and literature. Okay. Language and literature. So, kung may mga mabubuting, um, Kung may mga mabubuti nangyari sa mga Pilipino during the time of the American occupation, meron din mga hindi kanais-nais actually, ladies and gentlemen. So there were also some bad results happened during the American occupation. Number one, Filipinos became dependent exclusively on U.S. to continue to prosper economically. <clears throat> and Filipinos were so American and not extending to other foreign markets. Take note, ha, the Philippines was very open to trade in Europe at the end of 19th century or during the time of the Spanish colonization. Pero nung dumating ang mga Amerikano, na-control or kinontrol nila ito lahat, ladies and gentlemen. And when it comes to economic policies, American dictated the prices of the Philippine commodities. Totoo yan siya talaga. Filipinos were brainwashed through their educational system. Take note, instead na tinuturo ang Filipino values, instead na tinuturo ang, um, <coughs> sorry, <coughs> tinuturo ang Filipino values, Philippine history, Tagalog language, mas pinapa, ano pa nila yung English, no? and then um, 
uh, yung Filipinos during mga Filipino students during the time were um, conditionalized or conditioned being conditioned. So if ang mga Pilipino baunan sa ilang mga ginikanan kani adto og talbos ng kamote, saging, kakanin, pero dili na nila na mapansin kani adto because Filipinos are now so fond of what? Chocolates, hamburgers, sandwiches, ham or um ang tawag dito class no mga ingunana no or pagbalik nila na anay mga corned beef, canned goods no ito din yung how uh, the original ano ng pork barrel system no ng unang panahon how the Americans exchanged uh, a very good meat to Filipinos and then mayon sila nga we will own now your land because of this and that no ito yung grabbing din yung ways of land grabbing during that time the Filipino attitude of placing material things above spiritual things take note plus ha na uh, more Filipinos during that time uh, Filipina rather sorry girls Filipina wanted to um, to marry americano Kasi nga attracted na sila sa mga Amerikano na mga matatangkad, mapuputi, uh, blue, ay yung blue ang mga mata. Ayaw na nila sa mga Pilipino. No? Example lang ito. Ha? Ayaw na nila sa mga Pilipino. Kasi ang mga Pilipino, so, may itom, no? may pandak. So, na, tapos gusto na sa mga babae ka ni Adto po nga makalanghap o Amerika. No? So, ano yung mga ngunana ka ni Adto? So, again, Parang binabalik natin yung ideya na there was a diminishing sense of pagiging makabayan. Okay? There was a diminishing sense of pagiging makabayan. Now, for the span of 38, 39 years, ladies and gentlemen, the Filipinos were um, enculturated with American um, ways of living. Maraming Filipinos now were given an opportunity to to study abroad you know itong mga pensionados no na um, more filipinos can study to the US no kaya yung iba nagtake ng law and so on kaya kaya marami filipinos din talaga yung nagano sa US but uh, later on there was actually another threat no? facing the philippines and not only the philippines but even with the america kasi nga if the, that 1900s and daming territory ng na sa Asia na nasakop ng ibang mananakop and ayaw na ng ng isang country ito no kasi para sa kanila kung para sa Asia dapat ang makaka-benefit din ay ang mga Asians dapat ang makaka-benefit din ang mga Asians at hindi lang ang um ano tawag nito hindi lang ang ang mga mananakop Okay. So the entry of the Japanese imperial forced forces happened on that very year 1941. At the dawn of December 8, 1941, the Japanese bombers under the command of General Masaharu Homa conduct air attacks in various places of the Philippines. But to tell you, on that very date as well, December 8, 1941, okay, the the U.S. Pearl Harbor, no, it's a naval force in, in Hawaii, was also bombed. It was a surprise, actually. At hindi nakapag-prepare ang, ang, ang U.S. sa pamumomba ng mga Hapon sa Pearl Harbor. The same thing as what happened in the Philippines, hindi din nakapag-prepare ang mga U.S. and mga Filipino troops. Uh, they destroyed Davao, naval defenses, Davao, Tugegarao, Baguio, Iba, Tarlac, and Clark Field during that time. And the Americans, uh, American places on the ground were caught by surprise. The reason why a lot of Filipino soldiers and Americans were captured by the Japanese in the Philippines. So, kaya nagkaroon po ng death march, ladies and gentlemen. The estimated around 60 thousand to eighty thousand Filipino troops and American troops were captured by the Japanese. So ito yun siya class na uh, walang kawala. Kaya kung mudagan ka from them, 
pusilon ka dirit. So, and death march nga siya, kasi nga, they're not feeding you anything. They're not giving you even water to replenish, no? or to, to, to ease the thirst. Kung mamatay ka diha along the way, no? ah, wala na. Hindi na kanila puniton. Basta kay iligid na lang kanila somewhere, kay tungod, wala namang kay gamit sa kanila. Ha, no? Ito yung death march, kasi they, they march from Bataan to different uh, places until they reach Pampanga. Now, in the administration, President Manuel Luis Quezon was urged by President Roosevelt to flee to the U.S. Kasi natakot itong Amerika, baka gagamitin nila si Manuel Luis Quezon laban sa kanila. No? And laban sa kanila. So even Manuel Luis Quezon, no, nag-exit na din siya sa country, leaving several people in his cabinet to negotiate with the Japanese forces here in the Philippines. So on January 3 of 1942, the end of the American rule happened. So, nawala sa kapangyarihan ng Amerika dito sa Pilipinas. And again, a new chapter begins, no? the imposition of the Japanese imperial law or martial law, again, here in the country. So, what is it like during the time of the martial law of the Japanese imperial years? No? Now, take note, plus if uh, if, and I'm not sure if you're familiar with ano, class. If you're familiar with uh, the movie uh, Tatlong Taong Walang Diyos. No? This was starred by Nora Unor and um, Christopher De Leon. No? Wherein it was it was being showed there kung paano, paano ka, ka painful, no? kung gaano ka painful rather, yung pamumuhay ng mga Pilipino during the wartime years. Kasi um, when the Japanese were it was always a war. That was World War II. Ayan na naman, plus may mga nagbibenta na naman ng mga kaang, ng mga plastic na kaang. Isus ko. Now, the Japanese military authorities instituted outright confiscation and direct management of banking institution and public utilities. That means to say, kontrolado and hawak ng mga hapon, yung telecommunication systems, yung railroad systems, and even itong tinatawag natin mga banking institutions. Kaya nagpalabas sila ng, ka, ng kanilang own currency, no? yung tinatawag natin, Mickey Mouse money during that time. So instead of English, Japanese culture and language were taught and disseminated to these public schools. There have been tight instructions on the movement of commodities by the Japanese. Kaya nagkaroon ng scarcity ng mga primary crops no, sa Pilipinas. And wala nang nagsasaka Kasi natatakot na sa mga hapon. No? No, natatakot na sa mga hapon. Muna, kulangan na ang atong ginatawag uh, kulangan na ang ginatawag na tuog um, uh, supply. No? Tapos nagtaasa na ang mga presyo. Dahil napakataas ng demand tapos konti ang supply. Then, the worsening food crisis reached a point where the populace started eating plain lugaw. Even yung mga mayayamang Pilipino, no? Wala, magka, not all Filipinos does have a... So, uh, nag, uh, nakaroon ng support from the Japanese Empire. Many families were forced to sell their furniture and other personal belongings. And they've been observing ng lam, ang daming namimeke during the time of the Japanese occupation. An example of an example of um, the Mickey Mouse money. And then as you can see, no, malnourished na ang mga American soldiers and Filipino soldiers na nag-survive katong unang panahon. Well, well I, I, uh, you know, class, during the death march, what survived them was their determination, their faith, their hope. Hoping. And then, iniinom na nila ang kanilang mga sariling urine nila no? para mabuhay. Okay, wala man sila ilain na isulod sa ilahang tiyan nga nagkutoy, kundi ilahang mga kaugalingong ihi. Daghang mga babae during the time of the Japanese occupation hide from the Japanese. Kaya kung dili, mga babae maripan man sa unang panahon. No? Maripan sa mga Japanese soldiers. Even until now, gakaso gyapon sila anak class. Now, the Japanese Empire wanted to have reforms in the government. Kaya merong kalibapi. No? It 
Kalibabti actually promotes um, reconstruction and reformation of the Philippine government. Wherein on October 14, 1943, the Second Republic was inaugurated, electing Jose P. Laurel as the president of the Second Republic. Okay. So, si Jose P. Laurel na yan siya. One of the cabinet members ng Commonwealth government. Tapos, siya ngayon ay naging presidente na ng uh, Philippines under the Japanese occupation. Although, alam natin ng class na kontrolado pa rin siya. No? Kontrolado pa rin siya. So, uh, further, what was about resistance and restoration here in the Philippines? No? Grabe pa rin yung experiences ng mga Pilipinas. And violating the rules imposed were punished through water cure. So, unsa man na siyang water cure, no? Pag dili ka mutug ano tinuod, pag dakik collaborate ka po ka, nara advocate ka of separation from Japanese, from Japan, rather, no? Ilaha kang lumsan, lumsan. Or kung dili, no? Ilublub ka og bugnaw ka ang atubig tapos kurin, pakurintihan ka. No? Yan yung water cure nila no unang panahon. Pedestrians who refused to bow to the Japanese military were slapped, meaning ilaha kang sagpaon. Or if not, they will hit you in close fist. Health and living conditions deteriorated throughout the Japanese occupation. Kaya nagkaroon ng mga Filipino and mga, mga ibang tao ng TB, malaria, and nutrition ailments. No? Naging common illnesses yan siya. And some Filipino people also died due to starvation. Many Filipinos resisted and signed up to fight the maltreatments of the Japanese. Kaya little by little, plus nagkakaroon na ng mga guerrilla movement. And one of the best example of yung parang NPA nila nung unang panahon is itong tinatawag nating hukbalahak or hukbombayan laban sa hapon. And confronted the Japanese forces. So until the edge of 1944-1945, little by little class, bumalik din yung American forces from the U.S. And um, it's one of their promise actually to help the Filipino people during that time, to liberate us from the Japanese. And uh, in March 3, 1945, the Americans had won the war in Manila against the Japanese forces headed by General Douglas Arthur Mac Arthur. And it's a surprise din, class, no? Actually, uh, um, bum bumwelta din ang US sa mga hapon. Um, it was on April, I think, a uh, April or August. Something like that. I forgot. April or August ba yung class, no? Yung, yung um, bombing of the Hiroshima and uh, Nagasaki bombing of the Hiroshima and Nagasaki. I think that was uh, um, uh, August Palaklas. August, no? August, August, basta. August of 1945, no? Binombahan din ang, ang Nagasaki and uh, Hiroshima. No? Nag-ano ng nuclear bomb itong America. And then, um, on September 2, 1945, the same year, Japan had formally accepted the defeat of um, their empire upon signing a treaty on board USS Missouri sa Tokyo Bay.
Okay, hello. Sorry for that. May may dumating na package. Anyway, so uh, uh, that was so when the Americans went back to the Philippines and after the the end of this war, no, nung nanalo na ang America and Philippines, no, so asali na lang natin. Ito na yung tinatawa nating liberation, no. 1945 was also 1945, 1946 was also the year of liberation. And during those years, no, everything was everything changed. No, a lot of women can now participate in the military affairs. No, as you can see in this picture, no, they're being trained by the Americans. No, na paano mawak ng barrel. Then, of course, marami pa ring rescue operations na nangyayari during that time. And um, uh, <clears throat> Liberation, they're starting now again to form a new republic actually no, after the World War II. So, kung titignan natin, ladies and gentlemen, um, Filipinos became so resilient from these different periods of times. No? Naging, naging iba man yung, yung pananaw ng, ng mga Pilipino from different aspects of the colonization and occupation but still, Filipinos were so strong in handling all of these challenges. Okay? Now, uh, the end of the 1945 World War II and the occupation of the Japanese paved way to the new republic. No? We're in Itaguyuda. I think after... Um, after... Uh, Okay, so sorry for that. Uh, um, after World War II or after the Japanese occupation, so nanungkulan ang kung presidente ng, ng bagong, actually continuous pa rin kas, no? kasi continuous pa rin yung Commonwealth government. And it was uh, Manuel Rojas, na, no? si Manuel Rojas na yung the last president of the Commonwealth of the Philippines. And at the same time, binago din niya yung constitution, ang gobyerno, then he changed it into the Third Republic. Na, no? So siya na yung tinatawag na the first uh, president of the independent Philippines. Kasi nga, binigyan na talaga sa atin lahat ng Amerika. The Americans, um, parang umalis na. And then here comes Manuel Rojas as the president of the Third Republic. Okay, so that ends my presentation on the American occupation and the Japanese occupation in the Philippines from 1899 up to 1945.